bandwagon jumping, which some opposition members have been known to do. It's not about hearing what Joe says and then saying exactly the opposite straight away, even before you thought through what Joe has said. And it's definitely about sticking to the point. And this motion is about adult social care. The amendment is about the NHS. Both are really important, both deserve motions, both should be debated, but not at the same time. It just, it just is at best cheeky and at worst contradictory, or uh, co yes, cynical might be a better phrase. And it also is a bit duplicitous, and I mean that in terms of two things are happening at once, not someone's been deceitful, because, um, and the, the speaker, Councillor Jennings, did refer to the CERT committee meeting on the 22nd of September 2015, and this motion went to that select committee about this very point, and there is an action in council at the moment to write to the five MPs urging, uh, sorry, I'll get down to where, what we actually resolved, it was a, a, a amendment resolved by the chair saying committee requests the five local MPs to receive the information in this motion for them to take into account with any other information they may receive when the bill is considered by Parliament. And that action, as I understand it, is binding on Council and still applies. So we don't necessarily need this amendment if we have already, as a Council organisation, resolved to do that. So I would just suggest, at best, that this amendment is, is frivolous, yes, basically. And I would urge us not to support it. Lord Mayor, just on, on, the, uh, on the back of what Councillor Beaumont's just said, my understanding is that letters have actually gone to the MPs on that basis, so it does question the, the validity of the motion that uh, the, the Greens are trying to push. I mean, could I not have been informed of that in advance of this, so we wouldn't have had to go through this? Councillor Nell, on the amendment. Very quickly, with a point on the amendment, um, uh, it's worth pointing out that Jeremy Corbyn signed this, uh, even though uh, he's very cleverly worded in one sense. He signed this when he was actually an M uh, just a, an M a backbench MP before he became leader of the Labour Party. Um, so he wasn't doing it in his capacity as leader of the Labour Party. This was from July uh, last year. It's also um, quite difficult when you try and spring a private member's bill, which I dare say are not even read by most MPs, never mind uh, most councillors and, and askers to fully support it and then pressurise our local MPs on doing that and it's submitted on the evening of the council in, a, in order for us to do that. Um, what I would say, uh, so that there is no uh, debate outside of this chamber, in uh, not agreeing on this amendment, that does not mean that we do not support a publicly delivered NHS. Um, that's free at the point of need. Uh, which uh, I just, now call me cynical, I just get the feeling that if we went out of this chamber and we didn't support this amendment or this addendum, that would be the impression that is given by certain members to the public. And that Ca is simply Councillor not Lowe, the case. Can I, can I, at this moment, I'll, 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 I'll see then. Thank you. I'm going to ask the Chief Executive to clarify the position in relation to the addendum. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can I just uh, point to the, the wording that's, uh, of the amendment that's uh, has been moved uh, at the moment? Let me go to the end of it. That is not capable of being done now because it's already been done now. There might be a debate around the timing and sequence of that, but I understand that it was debated at committee, the action was taken, the letters have now gone. So the council's not in a position to be able to substantiate that part of it. But if the sense of the debate is a concern about making sure that adult social care and the National Health Service Thing are aligned together, then surely it must be within the gift of council to amalgamate the wording of both to get the best of both from that point of view. And I think that was the sense of what Councillor Noakes was saying at the very end now. Can I, can I bring in Councillor Yeah, I mean, one of the points that I was going to make is that I don't see how this has any comparison at all to the motion that we're doing. Yeah. The, the NHS bill, as put by, is a private member's bill talking about the scrapping of the CCGs and um, loads of other things and the recreating of the old system of uh, community health forums. It's got absolutely nothing to do with adult social care. Okay, any speak? We're going to still take speakers on the agenda and then we're going to go to a vote. 
Shall we move to the vote on the amendment? All those in favour? All those against? Extensions, is there? <coughs> Voting for the addendum is three against sixty-nine. No ex abstentions. The the uh, amendments is lost. Going to the substantial motion. Uh, we've still got Councillor Gladden. I've got your names down. You know? said by the uh, younger councillor Glam. Uh, the, <laughs> this is her last meeting um, after six years as the cabinet member for social care and health. So I hope you'll give me a, a little leeway uh, as I, I speak to this motion. Uh, Lord Mayor Council, it gives me great pleasure this evening to speak on this motion as assistant cabinet member of social care and health and Roger's husband. I have unique insight of her past five years within that job. When Ross first asked me to become a cabinet member, I refused as I believed we had some bad minded individuals amongst us who would describe it as favouritism. She responded by telling me, first of all, I'd received no extra payment, that it was extra work, but as my experience as a social worker, trade union officer, and previous chair of social services, she was looking forward to my expertise. Looking back over the last five years, I'm glad that once again she got her way. During the past five years, I have accompanied Ross to numerous uh, and on many occasions volatile public meetings. I have taken, these have taken place regarding the closures of London War Day Centres as well as many other hard decisions that had to be taken. These decisions to close were taken not only because of the, more, of the horrendous government cuts, but after visiting some of the centres, it was clear that they were in a disgusting condition and others were clearly not fit for purpose. A condition that had existed for some time, but a problem that the previous administration had chosen to ignore whilst in power, as they were anxious of public reaction, as they had nothing to offer to replace these services. Thankfully, no such reservations existed with Ros, the Mayor, and the senior management.